Well, welcome to Sutichai Live English. <clears throat> High politics is now in a very active and exciting mode. Thaksin Chinawat, former prime minister, currently on parole after having left a VIP suit at the police hospital after 180 days without spending one single night in jail, is now set to make his public appearance. And it's going to be at his hometown, Chiang Mai, that he would make that dramatic reappearance. What does it mean for Prime Minister Se Ta? What's next on the horizon of Thai politics? My guest today is Kun Waranai Kun Ko Wanichaka, former journalist, former politician, and now probably is aiming at returning to journalism. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Hello, uh, thank you for having me. Yes, I'm looking to return to journalism. That's great. That's great. More, yeah. more room to talk with on, on honesty. Right. <laughs> more honest uh, discussions <laughs> on current affairs, right? Right. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you see Thaksin's role uh, being played out now by himself and by his daughter, Kun Pe Tong Tan. And what's going to happen to mm -hmm. Prime Minister Seta when Kun Taksin makes his public appearance for the first time in 17 years in Thai politics? Well, I think everything is happening as expected. Mm -hmm. And that's the result of something unexpected, which was the Gao Price victory in the election which, in my opinion, is a very fortunate situation for Kun Taksin that gives him so much more bargaining power. Mm. It really means that, uh, let's just call him the, the deep state, now mm. has a, an enemy that is credible. And uh, then the most dangerous thing about this enemy is its, its ability to win the national election. And therefore, they need Kun Taksin more than ever. And in my opinion, that played a role in the deal behind the uh, behind the curtain which helped him to be able to come back and not spending a night in jail and um being able to form a government now i i think not spending a night in jail that is as expected uh he will have more role uh he will showcase himself more and more to the public and it's very important especially up north especially in chiang mai because the agenda the goal is one thing and it's clear you have to be able to compete with move forward in the next election. Uh -huh. And Chiang Mai is his hometown. It's his hometown. And uh, if I remember correctly, move forward one seven seat in Chiang Mai uh -huh. and and about 20 seat overall up north, his stronghold. So Pua Thai had lost a lot of his popularity for a wide ranging of reasons. That's Therefore, he, he needs to make up ground back and his presence there i mean truth be told will be a strong message hey i'm back yeah but the defeat of so many seats in the north for Taksin must have been quite a shock for him right it was quite a shock for him it was quite a shock for me it was quite a shock for the entire nation <laughs> because uh, as i remember correctly whether it's politicians or journalists everybody was saying that pure thai will win uh -huh. it may not have been a landslide but it but I will win until a couple of weeks before the, the, the result, uh, before the voting happened. Then people started to think, wait a minute, hold on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think, things were, things were forming differently. But in any case, they lost. It's the first time Thaksin has lost an election ever since he started Thai Rock Thai. So it's quite a milestone. Mm. Uh, so for the next election and everything leads towards the next election. He doesn't have to win. He just have to come in second and then form a coalition with everyone else. I think everybody knows that's already. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But, but in my opinion is he, of course, would love to win because if Pua Thai wins, then that's a clear path for Kun Ong Ing, Kun Pa Tong Tan to become prime minister. If he doesn't win, then it's a lot of negotiations. Yeah. And his and and Kun Pa Tong Tan may not become prime minister. And, um, but at the same time, the game is complicated because the way the deep state managed this country is that 
not one single faction can be too powerful because if you become too powerful, then you become a threat. Mm -hmm. And so the tough seat for Kun Thaksin is if he becomes too powerful again, maybe he's a threat. But if he mm -hmm. doesn't become too powerful and not a threat, then he lost a lot of bargaining power and the prime minister's seat may go to someone else. And notice we have been talking about five minutes. I have been talking a lot. I have yet to mention the name Prime Minister Seta Tuisin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be fair to Kun Seta, I think he's a very capable person, a businessman and a leader, to be very fair. But also to be fair to the reality of politics is, is that every, and you know, this is nothing new. Everybody knows this. He doesn't have the political power. Because he's only been a politician for, I don't know what, less than a year. And, and he's a representative and nominee of political party that has a clear, uh, you could say clear ownership or clear leader. It depends on how you want to look at it. But that, but that's a clear power in there. Not to mention all the banyai in there who have been in politics for decades, who have their stronghold, their voter base, their investments, so on and so forth. So you put a capable man in that situation. To be fair to him, there's not much he can do. But also to be fair to everybody, he himself also put himself in that situation. It was his choice. Right. It was his choice. And he must have known that he would not be able to call the shot. Or you couldn't imagine himself calling all the shots, maybe some shots. And we are not quite sure how many shots he can call now. That's <laughs> in his back and openly. We right. Some people suggested in the beginning that if Thaksin came back, he might just play a behind the scenes role and at least let Kun Seta have that public appearance of being in charge. But this may not be the case now that Thaksin wants to be upfront. Um, well, here's the thing. I mean, we human have bought the pragmatic side and also the emotional side mm -hmm. and as is stated by every major religion on earth we are plagued by ego and vanity and desire it's very difficult and i understand as someone who you probably know i have an ego myself <laughs> a vanity myself everyone has an ego but everyone has it you cannot manage it it depends yes. on how you manage your ego right yes but you just can't resist the center stage when you were once so adored, wherever you went, at least up north in Isan, you were so adored. Everybody look up to you. Everybody say that you are the best prime minister that Thailand has ever had. And I'm not even going to argue against that. That could pro probably be true. But when you are there and you have built everything with your own hands and to be in exile for 17 years and now to be back and it's your task, your job to bring Pure Thai back to number one prominent most powerful political party once again and it's also your job not as just Thaksin you know what but as a father to help his daughter with a clear path towards the prime minister's seat and it's also his responsibility and his duty to his people his patronage network that has stuck with him through thick and thin even with some people who defected and now are back because that's the way things are <laughs> you know he has to he has to put all of these things together and push it forward. And now I'm speaking as if he's some sort of a hero who takes all responsibility on his shoulder, but that may not be the case. It's simply, it could very well, it could very well be simply the case of, Hey, this is my empire. Uh, this is my business. Yes, yes, this yes. is what I live and breathe for. And this is what I will fight for. And that's why I believe he's in Chiang Mai. And that's why I, I believe he's in Chiang Mai to pay respect to his hometown, to pay respect to his ancestors. Everything is very genuine, very sincere. But also, if we only think that that is all there is to it, then we are being naive. Oh, yeah. There's also another, there's right. another side to it is simply, hey, I am here. You know what? The seventh seat that we lost, the 20th seat that we lost, I am here now. I am back. It's the return of Thaksin. You know what? He doesn't have to say much. He just have, just have to show up. And everything else can be managed from behind the scene. You know, all the big people will come to visit at his house. 
The deals can be done from behind the scene. Officially, he doesn't have to be anything other oh. than yes. doing the behind the scene thing and be out there. Mm -hmm. But he has so many balls in the in his hand at the same time. Apart from what you have just mentioned, there is this big issue of Kun Ying Lak Chinawat coming home as well. And he has to handle that with great care. Why is he taking on so many challenges all at the same time? Because he's the leader and he's responsible for it. And also, I believe that he believes that he can do it. Mm. Now, to be fair, again, you know, I mean, I have many criticisms of Kun Tak Sin, but one thing I will give him mm. credit for is that he's a leader and he's a politician and he knows how to politics. And he knows how to deal. And he's also a businessman. So he really know how to bargain and make deals. Just imagine your party have been coup d'etat twice. You've been in exile for 17 years. And some way, somehow, now you are back. Not one night in jail. And your party that lost the election became the government. Uh, uh -huh. That is that is some magnificent wheeling and dealing so you gotta give it to him so if there's anyone who can do it bring Kun Ying Lak back and I don't blame him for that it's his sister <laughs> you know you take care of your family I know, but why not but for political pragmatism this is quite a big task to handle all at the same time to revive your party to put your daughter in charge of the party to bring your sister back and to be able to manage the prime minister in such a way that he would not feel that he's being downgraded but at the same time you have to use him for at least a while before your daughter is ready for the job that that to an ordinary mortal like us is not possible but he you you think he can do it well i mean he managed to you know, won, won the election with Thai Rak Thai Party the first time he, he established the party and the second time a landslide and won every election so far. Will he be able to do it? Of course, there's a chance that he'll be able to do it. Will there be a lot of people trying to prevent him from doing it? Of course, there will be because then, because again, it's not just pure Thai and move forward. There are also other players. There's a, there, there's a cute, little old uncle who likes to wear Versace fashion that is, you know, like a bulger circling, you know, his, his back, he's resurrected, now he's ready to go. And that's yeah. why you see so many cases against like Pum Chai Thai and, and yeah. so many things are happening. So he's, he's playing his card. Uh, I'm sure all the all other political parties, I'm not talk even talking about the opposition, I'm talking about Rom Thai Sang Cha, I'm talking about Pum Chai Thai. Everybody have a stake, everybody have their card to play. So Kun Tak Sin has to be very careful in juggling all the balls that you have mentioned because there are so many players involved now. It's not like Thai Rak Thai in which they had a clear majority, both the first and second time, and even Palang Pasha Chun, and even the first Pure Thai government, when they all had a clear majority, and the only thing that could bump them out was either the tanks or the court. But now politically, you have players and powerful players, because in the coalition government, all the other parties put together, they have more MPs than Pure Thai. Yes, yes. So that's a lot of power. Yes. 20 years ago, when Kun Tak Sin you know, created this miracle of being able to win a landslide election, there was no move forward party yet. 20 years ago, right. Something different. Now it's totally different. You have this challenge from mm -hmm. a young party, which has proved to be able to win elections and win more seats than taxi now. Now, if you were, how would you handle that? Because you could make deals with the military, with the deep state, but are you sure you can make a deal with the young politicians, all these people who are now ready to run the country? And they, they refuse to be uh, your number two. They say, we must be the government too, right? Well, if I were Kun Taksin, which of course I'm not, I mean, he's the head of a political empire. I'm a failed MP, <laughs> a failed politician by my hand once so obviously i'm not him but if i were him i would do everyone a favor and and simply stay home and play with my grandchildren 
yeah. and let and let politics evolve, let politics develop. Mm-hmm. I think we are at a crossroad in which that if the quote unquote old men and old uncles would just stay home with their grandchildren and let things evolve, let Kun Seta and Pur Thai do what they got to do as the government, let Kun Pita and Kao Klai do what they got to do as move forward, and then we would have the conservative, the liberal, we would have democratic election and let democracy evolve and go on and, and evolve. The problem is all of these dealings. Now, to be fair, Political dealings happen in every country, no matter how democratic, no matter how transparent. But when the dealings are done with factors and powers that operate outside of democracy, that's the problem. And that's the dealings in Thailand and that's the problems in Thailand. So in my fantasy love in the field world, I wish all the uncles would just step back, but that's not going to happen because there are too much at stake. And therefore, this is a very sensitive situation right now. The many balls that Kuntaksin is juggling, obviously it can explode into his face at any time if he's not careful and there are people who are willing to light the match and i'm not even talking about move forward move forward doesn't have the power to do anything they can just make great tweets and that's it (laughs) they don't have power to do anything so it's the people that he are supposedly in alliance with and our bojo circling so he has to be very careful so thai politics right now is is uh, very sensitive and also very importantly the poor Thai government has to show performance, has to show result, and is not able to do that. To be fair, it's only been six months. To be fair, they don't have they don't have their own budget yet. But also to be fair, all of their bold, confident announcements that they have made, you know, digital wallet within this month, six hundred baht minimum wage with minimum wage within this period, this and that, none of which have been able to come through for whatever reasons, because the people don't have the patience to sit here and try to understand, oh, other people are trying to disrupt you, other people are trying to do this. No, you took the job, you're the government, you're the prime minister, either you do it or you don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Kun Taksin has emerged or is going to emerge in public uh, sooner than a lot of people think might contribute to your theory and that is that he has to show that Pua Thai Party doesn't have only Seta. I am also here and I'm going to make those promises come true. You think he would try to do that? Yes, uh, and that is Kun Taksin's leadership. You know, I always liken him to a strong man leader, you know, not in a dictatorship um, term spectrum because he was an elected prime minister always, but Kun Taksin has that leadership. Kun Taksin does have that persona as the man who can get things done, as the man people look to, to get things done. So I think it's very important to share that image of an old man with a neck brace and arm sling with a short and sitting, you know, sitting like a, a grumpy old man by the pool at his house looking very sad that image he has to get rid of he has to take off the breast the sling he has to stand up he got to put on the boxing gloves and he got to announce to the entire nation that hey i am back my name is Taksin. you know what i have always done it i have always had the answer i'm gonna do it again this oh. time believe me on that come on not that soon <laughs> a few weeks ago his doctors at the police hospital said he was in real, real trouble. You know, he was so sick that the doctors had to keep him at the hospital or else he could risk dying because, you know, that's the official statement from the corrections department. That is why he was kept at the hospital until the last day of his six months mm. before he could come home. So if he starts, you know, jumping around, boxing, and throwing off his, uh, you know, neck braces and all this, then people is, is going to start asking, hey, things changed that fast in Thailand? <laughs> well, perhaps I was being a little bit too dramatic, but uh, I remember back in America, 
we used to have a saying, you know, you, you trust lawyers. Sorry, you don't trust lawyers, you trust doctors. But in Thailand, you don't trust lawyers, you don't trust doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if the doctors work for the power that be. Um, is he sick? No doubt he's sick. He's what, 75, 76? Of course he's sick. He has issues. He has problems. But have you seen the schedules? His itinerary for Chiang Mai. I oh. just saw the news this morning. I, I forgot which channel, but it's a full schedule. He's doing so many different things. So he may not be jumping around doing shadow boxing, but he's doing active things. And you know what? If you ask me, I say, just Forget the charade. Do what you got to do. Yeah. You know, I think we, you and I and the people of Thailand, we are not innocent, naive people. We don't like to be treated as fools. Yeah. You do what you got to do. Yeah. yeah, you do what you've got to do. You do what you got to do, but don't, it's part of my American English, don't bullshit us. <laughs> and we would respect you more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. we will respect you more, and we will and we will respect anybody in politics more. Do what you got to do, but mm -hmm. stop it with the charade. Mm -hmm. It's tiring. Yeah. yeah, but but under the circumstances, how could Kun Se Ta really play the role of the prime minister effectively? Um. He cannot play the role of the prime minister effectively because first of all, when you're a prime minister, you're the prime minister of everything. Mm. But as soon as you um, put yourself in a little corner and classify yourself as I'm only here for the economy or I'm only here as a salesman, then you're not the prime minister. You might be the finance minister, you might be the commerce minister, whatever, but you're not the prime minister. So already back to the situation, he he's limited in his role and responsibility. So that's the reality. Now, Kun Se Ta can rescue this some way, somehow, if in all of his salesman, uh, traveling salesman duty, going all over the world, trying to encourage investment, so on and so forth. If there are successful cases in which companies like Tesla, Apple, Google, whoever else, actually come and invest in Thailand. Now that would be to his credits. Would that be enough? It depends on who you ask. You know, if you ask for Thai people, that's more than enough. If you ask other people who are more opponents of the government, they will say, okay, that's great. That's wonderful. But there are many factors involved in somebody wanting to invest in Thailand. There's a uh, global economic issues. Thailand is, has always been a strategic place so on and so forth. What we want to see are the promises that you made digital wallet mm -hmm. where is it digital wallet i think that is for me in my opinion that's the deciding factor if kun seta can push for that to happen never mind if it is good for the country or not that's another debate never mind if it's going to be good for the economy or not that's another debate but to get it done to make it happen if it happens that's to his credit if it doesn't happen that's a big mark on his Prime Ministership. But it may not be his decision. If some people think it's Kun Tok Sin's decision to press ahead with that project or not, because if it was Kun Se Ta's decision, he would have pushed ahead already. But now he's been buying time. He has set up another committee to study facts. He called them facts. Uh, perhaps waiting for Kun Tok Sin to decide or perhaps it's not Kun Taksin's decision either <laughs> <laughs> well now who's <laughs> now? I, I, yeah hey, you know Thai politics is what it is <laughs> everything I say you already know so <laughs> now, well because all these questions are floating in the air and you know there's so much discussion huh? and so many conflicting theories about the future of politics. Oh. One very controversial debate is whether Kun Tuk Sin is really in charge or is really that powerful, or is he just a victim of superior powers, powers above him, the army, you call it deep state. Is he really the, you know, the pawn in the middle of, of a bigger game than he can control. 
that I think it's a very interesting yeah. uh, theory or you know controversial statement. Mm. Um, it, it, in my in my opinion, Kun Thaksin is in charge of Pur Thai Party, okay, that's which all. means I, I I think that's all. I think and but I do not think Kun Thaksin is a pawn. I think Kun Thaksin is a player in the game. One of the players, not the main. One of the players, but okay. but as with every game, there is the game master, and that's not Kun Thaksin. It's and not. it's not Kun Taksin. Let's call it the deep state. <laughs> and 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 the way you manage, the way you rule is that you have to have the enemy, right? Yeah. That's to direct your energy against. And then you have you got to have your outlines, yeah. the players that work for you. Now the trick is you have to always be able to defeat the enemy, but you cannot allow any of your players to become too powerful because if you become too powerful, then you become a threat. Now, digital wallet, I mean, this is Thailand. Populism is still a very strong thing. That's something we have to accept. Now, if you are able to put 10,000 baht, whether in cash or in Bitcoin or in whatever, if you can put that in the hand of 40, 50 million Thais, that is an opportunity for a lot of votes. Yeah. So if I am the game master, I will always want Pur Thai and everyone else to get together and beat move forward. But I would not want any of my players to become too powerful because then you become a threat as we talk about a little bit earlier. And Kun Taksin had already became too powerful before and has proven a threat before, and we all know what happened. And therefore, if digital wallet doesn't happen, it would be because the game master deemed that it would be too dangerous to let it happen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So if you were running the move forward party, what would be your strategy with that situation, the kind of situation that we are talking about? Move forward uh, aims at the next election. And they believe that the more pressure placed on them, the better for them. They will get sympathy votes. Even if they're going to be dissolved, they would re-emerge in another form and perhaps even more influential, more powerful, more popular. And that's what a lot of people are saying, especially on social media, and that could perhaps happen, very well happen. But again, that is a lot on emotion and sentiment. We have to also look at the reality of the last election and how the next four years will play out. No doubt, I think most analysts will agree, one of the most important deciding factors for move forward's uh, victory was the mi rao mei mi lung. Yeah. If you have us, you have no uncles. That was a strong message. That, that I saw, took uncle. I, I thought, uh, yeah, uncle. Other uncles. We have so many uncles. We're, we're talking uncles for youth, uncle for wit, so on and so forth. That that was the deciding factor for everybody. Coupled that with Pur Thai's own reluctance mm. in making that announcement, and when they when they did it, nobody actually really believed it. That was a big factor. In the next four years, there will be no uncles anyway, not those uncles. Kun Prawit may still be around, but, you know, he's not the government anymore. Mm -hmm. There's no Prayut. So mm -hmm. you won't have that factor anymore. I don't, and, don't, don't underestimate him. Yeah. Donald Trump and Biden at 80 and 77 are still there. So. And, and, and you know what? My thoughts and prayers to the people of America, especially my friends back in Texas. That is not that is not a good look for the most powerful country in the world. Just two grumpy old men picking it out. That's not a powerful look. No, no. But, you know, every they have their uncles, we have our uncles. So I think that's that they, they will lose that factor. And yeah. also we have to admit Kun Pita was also a big factor, you know. Everyone who study politics understand the importance of celebrity dumb, the Obama factor to have that one guy with the right look, with the right demeanors, with the right speech, with the right smile, with the right everything. The right time. Now, the right time. And right time. And right time and right context. Okay. So last election, everything was right. The question then becomes, will Kunpita still be around for the next election? 
I mean, I mean, you mean uh, legally, were they still qualified to be in to be a prime minister candidate? Because he has to be the prime minister candidate. Otherwise, there's no magic in it. Now, I understand that. I mean, I I, I speak to a lot of the dom som, and 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 a lot of them will swear up and down. It's never about the person. It's about the principles. It's about the party. And I understand that, and I agree with you. For the hardcore political people, for the hardcore dumb so it doesn't matter. You will both move forward no matter what. But then you cannot discount the casual voters. Yeah, yeah. There are millions of them out there. The people who are not really into politics, the people who voted Gao Klai without even knowing that they had the amending 112 policy in their policy. There are a lot of those people out there and without the magic. That yeah. was Kunpita. They could go somewhere else. Now, of course, this is speculation analysis, not reality. But these are the things that we have to consider. Yeah. So, but other than that, other than that, I say move forward. Just keep doing what they have been doing. Mm -hmm. It had worked. Stick to your principles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go hard, but be smart, mm -hmm. and just make sure that the people who want change. All of them would look to you as the only viable agent of change. Mm. If they continue with that, they can win the next election. I believe they will win. Landslide, that is a question mark. That's really a question mark. It's, it, 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 three years, four years is a long time and many things can happen, especially if they get banned. If the executives get banned, they will lose a lot of the power players. Yeah, yeah. But if you say that Move Forward Party represents new politics, progressive politics, what does Thaksin represent in terms of politics, the branding of Thaksin? Well, the branding has changed, hasn't it? Um, there was a time when Kun Thaksin represented progress, right. represented liberalism, represented democracy, because, you know, he was democratically elected. He was yeah. ousted by coup d'etat. He was that symbol. Yeah. He was that symbol for everybody who was sick and tired of the same old way to yeah. rally around. He's what? no longer that. He doesn't, I have always, yeah. doesn't represent that anymore. So what is what does he represent now? What is he? Right now, in my opinion, he's a political player on mm. the side of the conservative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's an engine that will make sure Thailand continue as it is as it always have been, which perhaps, if we are fortunate, a better economy, a better quality of life. But that's that. But in so far as the pyramid that is Thailand, Thailand is huge, mm -hmm. patronage network of uh, run by the big generals, run by the big capitalists, run by the big Banjai politicians, it will continue the same. Uh -huh. And that is the, that, that is his role in continuing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, interesting. We will have to see what happens in Chiang Mai. Kun Seta just said that if everything can be arranged, he will meet Kun Taksin in Chiang Mai. It's, and why not? <laughs> why not? And why not? Make it public. You know, you don't have to do things behind the scenes anymore. But then it will be interesting to see how things unfold from now on. And it, it won't be long because in the next few months, we will see a lot of political developments that would have impact on the future of politics. For example, you have the debate in the Senate, then you have the debate in the House of Representatives, and you have the Senate, the present Senate um, expiring, and a new sort of some kind of an election of a new senate and the case of move forward party being handled by the election commission ready to submit its own proposal to the constitutional court on whether to consider dissolving the party and do not ignore the fact that there are also proposals to dissolve Pum Jai Thai party as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of a surprise. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I was shocked that one up to Uncle Versace. He just, you know, like to rock the boat. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Kuvanai. Thank but you very much, Kap. Very uh, interesting, delightful, and of course, as you mentioned earlier, it's Thai politics, so nobody really knows what happens until it happens. Exactly. We, we will see what happens next. Thank you, Kuvanai. Thank you, Kap. Bye bye. ติดตามสุทธิชัยไลฟ์กับผมทุกวันเช้าสายบ่ายเย็นมีเรื่องร้อนเรื่องวิเคราะห์เรื่องสัมภาษณ์เรื่อง e x c l u s i v e ต้องที่นี่ที่เดียวครับไปติดตามผมใน Facebook 2เพจเพจสุทธิชัยยูนกับสุทธิชัยไลฟ์และอย่าลืม YouTube ครับ YouTube ไปกด Subscribe ที่สุทธิชัยไลฟ์กด Subscribe แล้วกดกระดิ่งเตือนคุณทันทีที่สุดที่ชายไลฟ์มาในมือถือคุณนอกนั้น Twitter ไปกดติดตามและ TikTok ครับ TikTok ล่าสุดนั้นสามารถที่จะถ่ายทอดสดสุดที่ชายไลฟ์ให้ทุกท่านติดตามได้เช่นกันสุดที่ชายไลฟ์ anywhere anytime สุดที่ชายไลฟ์คือเพื่อนที่เล่าข่าววิเคราะห์ข่าวสามารถทำให้ท่านทันข่าวทุกวิ